What's up guys? This is Eric from Form Trends and I am here in a muse in London ready to see the brand new Autofabrica build. Now this is something a bit different that I don't usually do which is motorcycles and Yamaha specifically commissioned Autofabrica to create a custom motorcycle for them. Now Autofabrica is a team of brothers basically that started this company and they've brought on a friend that they're building custom bikes now out of their workshop here in London. And this bike behind me, this Yamaha, is what they built this new bike on. So I don't really know what to expect. Let's go in and take a look. So here they are. I've waited for the crowds to die down a little bit. We're now taking a look at the Type 11. This over here is the road going, street legal version of the bike that is sitting out in the courtroom with the Auto Fabrica Touch. And basically, this thing is just incredible. Now, typically, they're doing things like this older bikes, 1970s bikes, 1980s bikes, and basically giving them a new life. And this is uh, an XS750, I think, which they basically gave the Autofabrica treatment to. And if you look at it, it's actually sublime. Um, the side here, obviously this is all aluminum. And this side, so the left side of this bike, is completely different to the right side of the bike. If you look at the way that they shape the tank and shape the aluminum around it, this is entirely a single, well, it's a single piece, basically it's three pieces of aluminum here, but it's a single, I mean, look at, just look at the detail. Look at this incredible body of this bike. It just looks like a single piece. And this has all been hand beaten. And it's just truly beautiful. So the XS9, whatever it's called, is a brand new Yamaha bike. And what they've done is they've created this amazing prototype based on that model that's sitting outside. And this is a race going version. And originally, um, this was actually meant to have a turbo, which would have been insane. Like you couldn't ride this thing. So at the moment it has 140 horsepower, which is still pretty incredible on a bike, especially something like this. It has these race fillers over here, which basically, Pop, plug them in, fill it up, and you're good to go. You've also got this amazing bodywork, which is now more like Tron-like, you know? It's, it's like bringing the form language, bringing Autofabrica's signature into the future. And this isn't legal, but it looks absolutely insane. You can buy these from Auto Fabrica. All of these pieces are entirely bespoke. There is nothing that you can buy on this bike. Everything has been tuned. Everything has been formulated. Everything has been sculpted. And the sculpture on this bike is really what sells me. I mean, look at this. Look at that. Right there. This curvature over here. I mean, this is all hand built. This is incredible. These guys hand beat the aluminum, put it together, weld it. It's seamless. It's incredible. This is craftsmanship like they did in the 50s, like, you know, old world techniques, old school techniques into creating something that is entirely modern, like incredibly modern. I am here with the brothers. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce your last name, but maybe you can. Yeah, Maharemi, bro. Maharemi. Maharemi, okay. that's it. So, the brothers Maharemi 
who are basically the founders of Auto Fabrica. And Auto Fabrica, having put out what? 17 different bikes now? Probably around 25 now. Different so, types? Yeah, and not different types, but all together. Okay. In terms of production, 25. All right. uh, pipes, yeah, you're right, about 17. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. About 17 different types of bikes, all of which are different and yes. specifically tailored to the buyer yes. that comes to you. Now, with this Type 11, yeah. now, Tell me what it's based on. Tell me the bike that it's based on. Go on. This Type 11 is based on the uh, Yamaha XSR 900 Triple, which is a bike that got released in 2015 to the public to buy, and that's when Yamaha approached us to do uh, the collaboration work. Okay. At the time. Right. And since then, you've developed three bikes based, well, two, two bikes based on that platform that base if yeah, you will. the exercise and, and, yeah. and so one is XS750 and that's a 1977, 1977 XS750 XS the first triple Yamaha did okay so and then obviously they reintroduced the triple with this range which is a 2016 17 model thing right so, yeah. right okay and basically what I love about these bikes is that it's very even though it, one is an extremely classic looking bike, something that you guys typically do. Yeah. You also implemented the same form language into yeah. this modern yes. interpretation. Yeah. And there's, there's few changes, however, which I've noticed that are quite interesting um, from a form language perspective. Um, particularly in the DRG, if you look at the front of the bike and the headlamp, you've got this round headlamp, which is synonymous um, within the two bikes but you also have this kind of two turn signal indicators on the front. Now that is really very fresh and modern. Yes. This is something that you guys should, in my opinion, continue forward and make as a signature for Autofab. Definitely, I think that's, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the sort of black bike in the background over there that you yep. might be able to see, uh, that is what um, initiated this sort of design language with the tail light, uh, the, the headlight split in two, in two sections. Uh, we wanted to add a bit more aggression to the, um, you know, to somewhat quite classic styling. So this was a quite a nice way to sort of, uh, sort of add, you know, a, a, a very graphical as well as very um, as effective at the same time. You know, so this way we found a very easy way to add aggression to the design. The exhaust system is. Uh, Handmade in house is Sandbend um, stainless, rather. Three um, to three. Three to three, which is quite an iconic design in its, in its place. The uh, discs um, are operated from discs of 330mm PFM. It's cast iron discs, which is one of the best sort of material for the brake discs, yeah. mm -hmm. performance wise. The Olins are all blacked out, the forks are all blacked out, fully adjustable front and rear with the rear shot in the back. Over here with the adjustability here and there. That's for damping, that's for softness and you know that's for generally um, really like finessing your uh, riding style. So as you're riding along you can adjust these things um, to suit your whatever you're doing at the time, whether it's road riding, track riding and so on. Um, another way we increase performance is with the open filters and also with the um, ECU tuning where the, ECU, yeah, it's, it's a reflash ECU, which is for the mods basically. <laughs> with the styling involved in the whole thing and what we wanted to achieve with the, you know, with the Type 11 is we wanted to uh, create something that performs really well, looks really unique and it, um, you know, it's, it's, it's it comes as a complete package and with that we wanted to sort of put the benchmarking towards all those bikes ended up roughly around the 200 horsepower mark. Um, whereas this bike, in the way it delivers its power to triple, is really aggressive and just naturally. Um, and very quickly after riding the, <laughs> riding the standard and the modified bike with the mods, we quickly realized we don't need the turbo, otherwise we'll probably kill ourselves on it. So, uh, <laughs> we decided That's to leave the turbocharger out. You don't need to match 200 horsepower. You know, it's, it is a you know extremely fast machine. So this is almost a signature uh, touch that we do with 
within our bikes. We like to sort of, ext it's an extension of a normal tail light, which is EMAG. We like to, you know, take that a little bit further forward and create something a little bit more interesting. So, something in, you know, as automotive designers, we like to introduce to the sort of bike, and this is a perfect sort of example of what we, uh, what we do with the acrylics, where these, in fact, the edge just, um, accelerates the light that's coming originally from the unit which is further inside okay. and almost creates like a laser type effect wow. uh, dual layered. So this is something that we've, that we've experienced with um, quite early on in North Africa and we're continuing this is our signature style. And yeah, so there's the cutting. The thing is, the only alteration is the subframe. So it's a bottom part. It's a fresh subframe we designed and built, and that gives us the. Uh, the yeah. The so the the, the 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 subframe is an aluminium subframe, which is differentiates from the standard uh, Yamaha uh, Dyna bike, and it enables us to achieve this bodywork to basically wrap around. As well as that, the suspension with the yokes, front and uh, top and bottom, as well as. The subframe enables us to get the sort of styling that we've achieved with this mm -hmm. uh, together. So the original, the actual frame that holds, that cradles the engine and holds everything intact, with the engine is still kept standard. This is for, you know, for IVA testing and everything else that we need to do this. Okay. You know, you're not touching the main frame, so you don't have to re-test them. So yeah, the only difference is in the subframe. So it's still a production ready so bike, which would still, still be registered as a Yamaha. All we do what fabricate is coach building or something. We basically will take a stock bike and rebody it. So we don't we don't uh, like start from fresh. This is a Yamaha bike that we build the body over. Right. Um, and so we keep the integrity, you know, the performance and the road going ability of. But totally changed the aesthetic. We actually started prototype one with the carbon rims, uh, but Yamaha were working with Marani to develop those wheels. Okay. And they were saying, do you want to uh, have a go with these? And so we did some testing with them, and we just thought, oh, you know, it looks sick on that bike. It'd be great to like launch it here with those wheels. But we we filmed it all with carbon wheels. On. Okay. And because yeah. that's how we're gonna we're gonna sort of sell them with this. So yeah. You can upgrade to the variety if you want. Okay, so that's an upgrade if you want. Okay. Yeah, there's lots of upgrades. Well, it's an option. The yeah. whole idea, you, okay. can, you can buy well, it. Well, I mean, it's a bespoke bike, so yeah. you can you basically can, tailor it. Yeah. 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 So how many options are you guys giving to customers? Obviously, this bike is... I'm on trip, obviously, on it, and each bike would be different. You can do anything. And that's the whole point. Like, everything is custom, everything is bespoke. And people will know what they want. So we, know you, we like to cheer ourselves towards it. I think it's probably easier to talk about the pieces that are not one-off on this bike. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. if, well, if we talk about things. like things like the engine, for example, yeah. that's a donor. Engine is the triple from Yamaha. Okay. It's the XSR 900 triple. And the chassis. The frame and the swing the arm. arm. And, and so they're the things that are integral to it still being and, and this speedometer as well. So yeah, so we yeah. actually yeah we actually keep the speedometer. We, we, keep the, we keep the controls. This was a beautiful piece actually. It's not. It's um. It's something that is OEM, but we were able to design into this design because it's really clean. It's really simple. Uh, it's a really. It's one of the better units out there as a stock bike. Uh, we kept stock controls, but we customised them. Uh, but the other things, we don't do stuff off the shelf, we like to make everything, you know, mm -hmm. design it, even if it means machining or 3D prototyping, we'll do it, then. but we go for the performance parts, we go to the best people, so hence we've got PFM brakes, we've got the Brembo calipers, Olin's helped us with the front massively, and and totally, totally bespoke, yeah, and the rears, we've got basically a full black version of their stock Olin's or their top of the range Olin's. Um, but other than that, rental bars, clip-ons, we went for the best guys. 
but not what you would like it else. Tell me, like, what were some of the biggest challenges that you encountered? This this area around there is the most challenging. Like, if you look at the design, the, the, the way that everything is integrated with the clip-ons and the clearances with turning circle issues and um, top yoke going into an area which seamlessly feels like it's going to touch but it never touches and to be actually to actually be able to ride the bike um, that was the biggest head scratch for us <laughs> by far this is the most complex things you know we've ever built it's, it's probably will be the most complex thing we've yeah. ever built I don't, uh, I don't know how much further you can challenge yeah. yourself Exactly. Yeah. 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 This is uh, this is with uh, retaining your usability and being able to ride the bike fast and hard, like we've shown in the video. Um, you know, we wanted to retain all the usability with it to a certain degree, as well as look at the way it does. Mm -hmm. We don't want this to be a show pony or garage queen where it stays in the garage or whatever. Uh, we want people to buy them and use them um, and use them for what they are built to be doing, which is going fast <laughs> and breaking good and everything else yeah. so yeah this definitely this area here was the most challenging part um, the other challenging part was also this as well but not quite the same as the first yeah so one final thing that I want to talk to you guys about and it's this the filler guy. because the you've got this covered filler tank which basically the tank goes all the way down it into, goes in yeah and goes all the way to the front of the bike okay and Obviously it misses the speed of my <laughs> Yeah, right. So this fairing, basically, this entire mechanism was developed by you guys yeah, in-house as well. In-house, yeah. Everything we do is in-house, so we work out all the engineering. A lot of it is, like, development, so we'll, we'll make something, see how well it works, make another thing, make another thing, make another thing, and then we'll get right, that was the best one. Let's do that and then fine-tune it. So. This is essentially still a prototype and we've got a bit of fine tuning to do for production, but you know, this is this is the scope of things that we're gonna cut. So thank you very much gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. <laughs> Fabulous job. Thank you. Thanks again.